This is simply the best device to eliminate any Z-wobble from your prints. I've been using these on my printer for two years now and I'll never go back to anything else. Let's see how they work and why are they so efficient. After designing the Evort Triple Z system using ball screws, I was facing massive amount of Z-wobbling. As explained in a video I did two years ago, ball screws are very rigid components and they will force your printer's Z-axis to follow their radial runout. And as you know, it does not take much to create surface artifacts on your print. My first approach to fix this wobbling issue was to decouple the ball screw nut from the bed carriage using steel balls and magnets. The wobble wings worked good, but after a while, the balls would eat through the magnets coating and their operation would not be smooth anymore. There was also a slight amount of backlash due to the alignment magnets on each side not providing a full rotational lock. This soft lock made it also difficult for this system to be used on screws with a higher level of friction such as regular lead screws. This is where my good friend Evo Moto from the Hevort community came up with this great idea. Using metal pins to form pairs of rails and metal balls in between those pairs of rails to allow radial deviation while keeping a perfect track of rotation. A few iterations later and we now have a compact and efficient system. The Wobble X isolators were born. This metallic version of the Wobble rings from Evomoto has a minimal thickness that limits the impact on your Z available distance while being able to support great amount of bed weight without any deflection. What amazes me about that system is that it can compensate the deviation of your Z-screw nut under four axes. Two axes to follow the screw wobble, just as any other system currently does, but this one throws in two additional axes. These two axes will allow the curvature of the crooked screw to tilt the nut without having any effect on your Z-position. If we compare these two CAD models, one using the Wobble X system and one being rigidly fixed to the carriage, you can rapidly appreciate how this system can stabilize your Z-axis. So how does that translate into real life situation? Let's remove the Wobble X I have installed on my printer for this particular screw, which is by far the worst unit I have under hand. And let's see how much it will screw things up, pun intended. With this ball screw hard mounted to the bed system, we can clearly observe how the bed is being wobbled around. Even the printer's frame is being twisted under the authority of that screw. I will print a 30mm vase mode cylinder to visualize the impact of that crooked ball screw on our print. We can already see during the early stages of that print that it won't be pretty. Look at that repetitive pattern, exactly 4 mm apart, just like the distance these 1604 ball screws will provide for each rotation. I will reinstall the Wobble X to perform another print, but as I'm doing this, I'll take this opportunity to replace my old and ugly Z slider mounts for these shiny new ones made from carbon fiber ABS. This particular part has been re-welded back together following a pretty bad crash. While I'm performing the installation, I invite you to subscribe to my channel and to click the bell so you make sure to be notified of any new content. Okay, we're now ready to print and see how these decoupling devices perform. By homing the printer, we can already observe that when we remove any constraint on this ball screw, it will oscillate pretty bad. But all of that oscillation is taken away from the Z carriage by the Wobble X. 
Let's place a dial gauge magnetic base on one of the bed's rail to take a reading on how much run out are we talking about. With all the freedom to wobble around, this ball screw has a radial deviation of around 10 thou of an inch, or 254 microns. This is more than the layer thickness that I usually print with. By looking carefully, we can also observe that the nut has a slight plane tilt. To quantify that tilt, I'll place the dial gauge needle on the bottom face of the nut. With a variation of around 25 microns, this nut resting surface oscillation will squish or stretch the layer height by about 10%. Remember our extrusion discussion? You know that it really doesn't take much to throw things out of whack. For a proper understanding of what that 10% in layer height will do, let's use the analogy of the silicone gun. When using a silicone gun, at constant speed and constant flow rate, a simple variation in the nozzle height will change the width of the bead. By keeping that behavior in mind gives us the following table for the case we're interested in. For this constant volume of extrusion corresponding to the material contained into 1 mm of filament, we will use a targeted layer profile of 0.5 mm wide by 0.2 mm high. This cross-section of 0.1 mm square allows us to spread the volume over a distance of 24 mm and 53 microns. If we round off the oscillation to 20 microns to make things easier, and that we split it equally on each side of our target, we will obtain squished layers that have a height of 0.19 mm and others that will be stretched to 0.21 mm high. Considering that the only thing that can change from our scenario is the line width, we obtain something like this. Some layers at 526 microns wide and other ones at 476. This is quite a bumpy surface, right? Obviously, the larger the screw nut is, the more impact on the Z position it will have. Also, on a triple Z system like this, the variation will not be the same all across the bed since only one corner would be bumping up or down. But you get the general idea. One thing to note with that system is that it is important that the top of your Z screw be contained. This system allows the screw to move freely. Therefore, if your bottom coupling cannot maintain your screw straight enough, or if your screw is bent too much, you may end up hitting the maximum allowed wobbling distance from the wobble X. Enough talking and let's see how these print. It is almost difficult to believe that this crooked ball screw could give such a nice print. The Z bending has disappeared completely and the surface is now smooth. I've been using this system for the past two years and I never had a single issue with it. No maintenance, no cleaning while providing excellent performance and reliability. In partnership with Mellow 3D, we are proud to make the Wobble X available to you in three formats. The WS12 for 12mm ball screws, the WS16 for 16mm ball screws, and we just released a few weeks ago this tiny guy, the WS8. This 8mm version is meant for most lead screw applications. A GitHub repository has been created to provide adapter parts for various printers. Here are a few examples of what we have ready so far. Rat Rig V Core, Ander 3, Vor and Trident, If you would like to adapt the Wobble X to any other printer, you can find the step file of the Wobble X mockup on this GitHub as well. See the link here below and do not hesitate to do a pull request if you would like to submit a new adaptation for any other printer. Allow me to take a moment to thank all my patrons for their amazing support. Thanks to every one of you, your help means a great deal to me. It facilitates access to tooling, parts and resources. Thank you very much. This video closes a very long chapter of my 3D printing journey. 
I can be pretty hard-headed sometimes. Okay, okay, most of the time. I just had to prove that cheap ball screws could be used efficiently on a 3D printer. But why ball screws? Well, I think they are tough, low maintenance, they can take quite a bit of heat, and they look awesome. What do you think? I now consider this a check in the box, and you should not hear me talking further more about Z-Wobble. Ever. Unless... That's it for today. I hope that the Wobble X can help those of you battling with Z-Bending artifacts. Thanks for watching, and happy printing.